Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look and tear down this motherboard. Um, so this is part two of um, a multi-part review. Sorry it's been a little bit of time, but um, we're getting content going in this pipeline again. Um, so here we have uh, the heat sinks and we're going to remove them. That's the first step while we turn this down. And uh, first is the chipset one. The chipset heat sink right here. Um, it seems to use thermal paste instead of some kind of like really thin pad, which is good. Um, and then we have a heatsink here. Um, now this is for the I/O stuff. I gotta get the I/O shield out a little bit. Well, let's start with the VRMs. Uh, here is your top one. Both. Um, so these are seven um, millikelvin per watt um, rated, which is pretty good. A lot of the high-end brands use this. And uh, so both the inductors and the power stages are being cooled. Now this one is tricky for what reason? Oh, that was pretty easy. Okay, this can come off in one piece, I guess. So here you have your other pads for the um, the rest of the VRM. And then here you have your IO shield integrated. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's tear down this motherboard. First by taking a look at the voltage regulator module control mechanism. And that is this digital PWM right here. The little one with the little dot on it. That is a Renaissance, and it's a digital PWM in 8 plus 1 phase. It is a RAA229132. Okay, now the eight phases from this PWM controller for the CPU V core, they're directed to the backside. They're eight um, ISL 6617A doublers. Okay, they're really tiny and we'll cover them when we flip the board, the board over. But then each one of those PWM phases is double to two. A very common thing. I think, actually, I think they call this a duet rail power system. Um, that's what MSI calls it for marketing because they're actually using the doubler instead of not using the doubler, which is cost more money. Um, but it gives you higher efficiency. Um, so basically, there we have that. And then each of the power stages are 90 amps for the CPU V core. They're inner sill 99390, I think. I wrote it down, I can't see that small. It's on the website if you want me to double check, but I think it's a zero. Um, anyways, they're 90 amp power stages. Um, there's 16 of them. And, uh, they, and if you're wondering why they're mixing uh, Renaissance and inner sills, because inner is owned by Renaissance. They bought them. Um, so their portfolio also goes over. Now, the CPU v, uh, IGP phase is over here. This lone phase right here. Okay, now this is a, um, I believe it's a 75 amp. It's a RAA Renaissance part. 220075 um, R0. Can you read my hand? Okay, but it's not important. It's a 75 amp power stage. Um, for the CPU, not V-Core, but... The phase for the single CPU auxiliary uh, voltage, that's a, that's a monolithic power systems part. The PWM is a, um, two, an MPS2940A, which is this little chip right here. And then over here is the power stage, which is a 70 amp, uh, we believe, because there's a spec sheet online. It's an MP87670. Uh, the 70 at the end might give it away, but sometimes manufacturers, they don't like keep steady with that kind of stuff. All right. Um, well, we might as well just take a look at the rear USB since we're already here. All right, continuing with um, basically the rear I/O. Now we went over the main CPU VRM. Don't worry, we'll cover the DRAM VRM. It's just a single phase, two power packs, and the Richtech PWM controller. Um, anyway, so right here we have uh, some of the USB hardware for the back panel, or not even USB. This right here, that's a re buffer. Um, yeah, it's a rebuffer. It's from IT. It's an IT866318. Now, that rebuffer is basically going to make your HDMI signal work better. Um, I think it's also probably a retimer, re a level shifter. Um, but also here, and now we're into USB territory. ASM 1543, that's a Type C controller switch. And in front of it is a PI3 EQX um, 2002, I believe. That's what it should be. Yeah, 2002. Oh, uh, no, um, yeah, 2002. Now, here, we have a, um, oh, no, that's a, that's a 1002. ASM PI3 EQX 1002, because that's 10 gigabits per second, not 20. Um, so that's your Type-C 10 gigabits per second on the back. That's its uh, power, um, it's Type-C switch. Going over here, we have a Genesis Logic uh, hub. This Genesis Logic hub is a um, a GL Genesis Logic GL um, three five two three. 
Okay, USB 3.05. Now, remember that number, 3523, because we're going to see another one of these chips. It's going to have the same numbering on it, but it's going to be a different controller because it's going to be smaller. This basically takes in one read-driven port from the chipset and turns into the four blue USB 3.0 ports you see on the back panel, 5 gigabits per second. All right, now here, right next to it, you see a tiny little chip. Now, this is your power delivery controller for the 20 gigabits per second uh, Type-C port, and this is a, a IT... 8851. Now we've seen this before on MSI motherboards. Um, it seems to get the job done just fine. So uh, moving on, um, here we have a network controller right before we flip. This is an I226. Okay, it's not an I225. I know some earlier revisions of the I225 LAN controller, they had some issues, but this is I226. It's the newest, newer version. We're going to flip the board really quick and take a look at some stuff here. Okay, now this chip... Um, this was a little uh, confusing to me for a little bit because this is actually a, t a Texas Instruments USB uh, 1146 chip. Now this is the DisplayPort read driver, but it also has a capability of adding in um, basically USB and DisplayPort into the same thing, like into the same Type-C con uh, connector, right? But that's not what it's used for here. Here is only used to basically read drive the DisplayPort output, okay? So it supports um, DisplayPort read driver supports 1.4 with HBR3 so you can go up to 8K on this motherboard and I don't know why they're underutilizing this but I think I know why MSI um, when you make motherboards like this these aren't your big money makers um, they're great in profit margins but the thing is you don't sell like hundreds of thousands of them okay you only sell like small amounts small quantities here and there like thousands tens of thousands the most motherboard vendors they make a lot of their money in volume but the reason that you see this because they have to source it in uh, they have to source this chip pretty high end, probably for their MSI's gaming laptops, which have a much higher end laptop, uh, higher end margin. But then when you buy a bunch of stuff and you want to use the same components, it makes sense to see something like this underutilized in a product like this, um, because you just don't need this connectivity here. So um, it's just going to the Display port on the back. Uh, so it's pretty cool. You get high end, basically, what I'm saying is you're getting high end hardware here where you really shouldn't on a product in this price range. Uh, this most likely is going to be seen on a couple thousand dollar laptop. All right, not a couple hundred dollar motherboard. Um, anyways, so here we have a uh, this is a redriver. This is a single uh, 10 gigabits per second USB 3.0 redriver. Um, I believe it's the um, 1002 PI3 EQX 1002. It's a single port, and this is um, for the Type C 10 gigabits per second on the back. We saw the ASM 1543 up top, and then this is for that on the back. Um, now here you see a different, a different uh, controller. Now this one here is a. Um, this is a PI3 EQX 2004. This is for the 20 gigabits per second. Um, it's the one you most likely see most of the time. Okay, and here are your uh, doublers. <laughs> they're so tiny, right? Like, is they're actually really hard to photograph. I think that was one of my first really hard photographs back in like X58s. I think I think they actually came out with a 6617 around P67 launch. That was like way back then. I think when they first started like really going with the core uh, architecture um, with Sandy Bridge. I think that's where I first saw this. Or maybe it was actually also in the X58 boards. I, my memory's a little foggy on that. Anyways, that's all we have to cover on the back of this board. So, oh, um, the Wi-Fi controller, that's um, AX211 from Intel. Um, Wi-Fi 6E. Um, let's see, anything else I gotta cover here? No, yeah, okay. So, audio section. You got, um, it's not too crazy, but you do have the new ALC codec, the ALC4080. Um, this is better than some other motherboard manufacturers are doing uh, for boards like this. So that's nice, and you have the audio capacitors, the uh, electrolytics, and uh, PCB um, basically separation. Now, uh, remember I said that that one chip had a read driver? Now, this is a Genesis Logic, um, a single USB port, USB 3.0 read driver. Um, it's the GL, I believe, 9900. Yeah, 9900N. And that basically takes a single USB port from the chipset and delivers it all the way over to that Genesis Logic hub. Okay. So that's cool. Um, here is your main Super I.O. It's a new Vuitton controller. Um, it's a uh, NCT6687D. Here we have uh, two um, switches. Okay. 
Remember how I said earlier in the other part of the review that um, some of uh, actually there's not switches. These are read drivers for this port for the PCIe. My bad, I messed that up. Um, so I believe these are PI3EQX16021. They're read drivers for the lanes here. Okay, I don't know why they read drove them, but that's nice. It's probably the same thing where they have extra higher end stuff and they're just adding it in. Um, this is a Nuviton controller for RGBs. NUC, yeah, it's always NCUC, 1261NE4AE. Okay? So that's that. Now, anything important here? Oh, not too much. You got your Geotech thing here. You got your BIOS ROM here. Um, not there. Sorry. <laughs> BIOS ROM is, should be right there. Oh, yeah, it's hidden from me. Um, BIOS ROM is here, 256 megabits. This right here is your DBS switch, PI3, this one right here. That's a PI3... It's a PI3 something DBS. It's, a, it's basically... So when you... Um, it basically switches that SATA between PCI 4.0 and SATA for that one slot right here. Okay, so it switches uh, SATA between uh, this single SATA port and this uh, M.2 slot, the gray one. Yeah, so that's what that does. And then you have an ASM uh, 1061 here. <laughs> I don't even have to guess that. I know that. Um, and then over here, we do have some other components. You get another... Uh, so this Type-C controller here, this uh, this Type-C header here, it also has an ASM um, uh, 1543. Um, yeah, so that's that for that. And then we have a read driver here, single lane again. So you got your power uh, Type C switch controller, and then you have your power um, read driver, uh, PI3 EQX 1002, and then um, here's that other Genesis Logic chip I was telling you about, the GL4 uh, GL 9900N, um, and uh, yeah, so that's there. Hold on, one second. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, see, but this is a, it has the same markings on it, but it's a, it's a much smaller chip. It's just a two channel chip or two port chip. Here you have your rich tech uh, memory VRM. Um, so you have your PWM controller and then your two, uh, the PWM controller is a RT8125, uh, very common. Starts with QZ equals, um, the QZ is the product code. The 9F is the uh, date. Yeah. Okay. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I know that was a little quick, but um, if you have questions, just ask them. Thank you.